Oh, you do that? If it's hot, yeah. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was figuring out if they were gonna pick eating pizza with a knife and fork. Yeah, but sometimes you do it on the top. Okay. So I'm gonna do uh, <laughs> scra- scraping. Uh, and, uh, and, yes, scraping yes, yes. cheese off of it. On today's part in my take, Washington Commander Terry McLaurin. We have the Mount Rushmore of pre-crime. We catch up on a bunch of stuff going on in the sports world. Fire Fest of the week and Patrick Reed's lawsuit against our good friend, Branley Chambliss. So great show. Sending you into the weekend. We're only a couple weeks away from football, and we're brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. Uh, I can't wait for football to be back. I think we all can't wait for football to be back. Where do you think the best seats in the NFL stadium are, Hank? This is actually a very good question, and it's going to tell us a lot about Hank, C-Suite Hank. I think it's got to be the the fifty yard line at Gillette. But but where, like lower bowl, top bowl, middle of the lower bowl. Mm, wrong, wrong. The best seats are on the on the like the first row, top level, fifty yard line. That's the all twenty two, baby. That's the all 22. You get to see everything. Well, that's actually an obstructed seat at FedEx, so you can't sit there. Yeah, but that's I'd say the the two non-obstructed seats at FedEx Field, those are the best seats in football. Yes. Uh, The the biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. Download the Game Time app. So go to the account tab and create a login and redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. Thank you to Game Time. Football is back. Game time is back. Go download it right now. Go to that accounts tab to create a login and redeem code PMT for $20 off. Your first purchase terms apply. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Game Time, the best place to get tickets. Football is back. Game Time is back. Today is Friday, August 19th. It's November in West Lafayette. A beautiful gray sky coupled with a balmy high of 47 degrees. This is where championships are won and lost. Two titans prepare to clash in a 60-minute battle of field position. 5-3 and three Purdue welcomes 3-5 and five UCLA. It's Big Ten football on CBS, presented by Home Depot. So the uh, rights have been finalized. The Big Ten has, uh, they basically have a buffet of of sponsorship or or television rights. Uh, It's going to start with Fox. Then it's going to go to CBS 330 game. Then it's going to have the NBC game late at night. And here's what we really need, though, what came out of all these meetings. Fox is going to run a television draft every spring on what games each each uh, company gets, which why wouldn't you televise that? Yeah, how no, great is that draft going to be? What's the what's the purpose of doing a draft if you're not going to televise it? Yeah, that's and then stupid. who gets? But I, then you have to I, draft I, to see who gets to televise the draft. And I I want to see I want to have like a Mel Kiper who's breaking down what games you should go after. Right. I want to have draft grades. Yep. Immediately afterwards, I want to see I want to see who's get a bust. I want to go back after the season's over yes. and say, okay, this person did a bad job. They should be fired. No, oh, Penn State wasn't that good. So the Ohio State Penn State game that you picked one one wasn't a great pick. Yeah, exactly. Like they, we need to make an entire ecosystem around TV rights and analyzing how they do picking them up. Which games got, got the best ratings? Yep. So we can look back and and then we can do an entire BCS of networks at the end of the year. This is and what, do a playoff. This is it, right? We, <laughs> we, this is we, we're giving you free ideas, Big Ten. But yeah, that was um that was announced like an hour ago and i'm just so excited uh we also have the announcement or it hasn't been announced but we think it's going to get announced to sean watson it's been announced it's been announced so what is the official ruling 11 games 11 game suspension which translates to roughly like 0.7 games per woman he's assaulted right um and then i think on i think, top I of think that, the number is like 70 it's gone up. Well, it was like sixty, but then it was you know they paid, paid off a bunch. So whatever the punishment, yeah. it should fit the crime. He should have to jack off Swagger the dog before yeah. every game. Well, it's also this is eleven games now. We get to go back to the conversation we had where people are going to be like, oh, okay, so eight to eleven. Now it's enough. 
Yeah. What? They, they just raised it. And yeah. so, obviously, anytime the NFL announces a suspension, my first instinct is, okay, what's Goodell's angle behind this? Mm-hmm. Why, is it, why is it 11 games? That's a weird number, right? So you look at the schedule. That game that he'd be coming back would be against the Houston Texans. So they have to talk about it all the time throughout Houston, the entire game team. in Houston. The home, homecoming. Who, who Houston was implicated in, you know, uh, aiding and abetting some of these things as well. Yeah, now also the second thing I thought, Big Cat, was, wow, that's kind of weird, 11 games. Okay, so yeah, he's coming back in, against Houston. Wait, when when does flex scheduling start in mm. the NFL? Yeah, it just so happens starts right on week 11. I don't know if they'd flex this. That would be... That would be... That would be too transparent, maybe. So like, because the Texans aren't going to be good. The Browns might not be good without Deshaun Watson. So if they flex this, it would be quite a move. Yeah, so as long as Deshaun Watson... Yeah, I think he just promised. He's like, Roger, I, I swear to God, I won't sexually assault two dozen women ever again in the history of my Pinky life. Pinky swear. I'm done. Pinky yeah. promise. Put a stamp on it. Week 13, Sunday Night Football is Colts at Cowboys. I feel like that... Those are two teams that you don't know how good they'll be. So. Yeah, that's oh, true. Jake Barry and the Cowboys already. I or is love he it. burying the Colts? Oh, the Colts. He might Maybe be burying the Colts. You don't know. Matty Ice. Matt Ryan. I'm just saying, if it was like Chiefs Packers, there was no shot that we, would get changed. You know what we need to do, by the uh, way? They're not going to take the Dallas Cowboys out. The Matt, that's true. The Matt Ryan uh, on the Colts thing, next week... Maybe on Sunday night, we should just do a big round table of like fun facts. This guy's on this team. team. Yeah, we do. For need everyone, to do that. for all the listeners, for ourselves, where we just go through all the rosters and we're like, fun fact, Julio Jones is on the Bucks. Yeah, remember Marquise Goodwin. I think he's on the Seahawks. Yeah, so right? we'll Isn't do that. that. What we learned. Yeah, we will do that. Everyone, come with a couple uh, Bobby fun Wagner, facts. We'll, we'll try to wow Former each Seahawk other. Now on the who? Yeah, we, we'll wow each other with, uh, with with some fun facts. Um, so yeah, the, the Sean Watson news came down. Um, what? There's not a bunch else going on right now. We're in that waiting pattern. Um, we got a good Mount Rushmore coming up. The only other things I wrote down. Um, there was two White Sox stories that that I wanted to mention real quick. Get your guys' take on. The first, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, the fan at the White Sox game that basically was coaching the team, and Tony La Russa denied it, but if you if you missed the video, a fan was basically in the first row right behind the, the uh, on-deck circle, and he was screaming to Tony La Russa, put in Adam Engel as a pinch runner, and it was maybe two seconds later that Tony La Russa came out and put in Adam Engel as a pinch runner. So Tony LaRusso is just doing fan-controlled baseball now. I like that. Yeah. Good idea. Pay attention. to They pay your salary. They buy your drinks, Tony. Yes, yes. And then the other one was, did you guys see the kid, the 11-year-old kid that, that ran on the field? I At the White Sox game last night. I you Were you watching this game? N- well, no. I saw it I saw it pop up, and I was like, holy shit, why do more kids not do this? Yeah, you can't I get in trouble. Right. Why do more Security kids... Security can't tackle you, right? Why, no. They literally just uh, uh, like yeah, kindly... Yeah, they're holding his hand. <laughs> yeah, they held his hand and walked him off. And yeah. I was like, this kid is a fucking genius. Yeah. If you're under... Uh, let's say... 14 I would say 14 is about the age where I don't think a security guard would tackle you why wouldn't you just run on the field and then you go you get a slap on the wrist and they're like they probably tell your parents like don't ever do that again well no so what happens is if you're a kid you run into the field your dad gets to then run on the field to bring you back yeah sorry sorry everyone I'm gonna grab my kid and while he's out there gets to say hi to all his all his heroes. Wasn't that, was that a White Sox game or was it a Royals game like 15 years ago? Uh, it was a White Sox w- against the Royals. Against the Royals where, yeah. where a father and son went on the field yeah. and just beat the fuck out of the first base coach. It was White Sox saving his dad. Yeah. That, yeah. that was. It actually wasn't. That, I say that every time it comes up. That was up, a crazy, yeah. crazy. Shirtless. Just yeah. going to beat the fuck out of the first base coach. Honestly, though, like a, gr- 
a great, I, or a great, family, great bonding I, moment though. If you get into a fight with your dad and beat somebody up, you're like, do you see what I did? You know, and and then it also was a great the the opposite of it was great because there it's very rare in life that uh, a bunch of dudes get a chance to beat the fuck out of someone else and be completely absolved from any guilt. Do you know what I mean? Like that was. The, the rare case where both teams can be like, we can beat the fuck out of these two guys yeah. and no one can say anything to us. Yeah, it's like if, if you happen upon someone who's like committing a crime and they get tackled, like get a free shot, right. a couple free shots in. But yeah, they could go over there, stomp them out like Ty Cobb. Right. And like, I, everyone's like, good. Yeah, they deserved it. It's like a, like a, one of those spring break, break videos where like a guy like, you know, hits a girl and then everyone just fucking swarms the guy. It's like, you get free reign on this guy. Yeah, I would like to be a part of a situation like that. Yeah. I, I, think, I feel like I'd be a good person who would like just stomp on the guy's arm and be like okay guys we don't want to actually hurt him yeah like okay we've sent our message stay off the head a guilt no head no beating. body yeah yeah um so yeah those are the two stories that i saw and then wait what, what did you say what did you say uh jake what was that do you think he gets banned oh the 11 year old yeah i don't think so or like his and family his parents once he hits puberty he'll look completely different yeah he gets a stern talking to that's what i'm saying it's the perfect crime like more i don't want to tell all of our 10 year old listeners to do illegal activities, but you should be running on every field. Yeah. And also every field start smoking weed now and start wearing a part of my take shirt. Pre when you <laughs> pre free part of my take shirt to any 10 year olds that run on a baseball field. I like that. <laughs> no, I, I'll match. imagine this week. <laughs> yeah. like three different ball. I would be the funniest <laughs> yeah. crime spree in America. Well, I think, like a bunch of 10 year olds just interrupting baseball. I games. think baseball is a sport that you could get away with it more at because in base, they're not kids in baseball. They're youngsters. Right. And like announcers fucking love youngsters. And they're so, trying to grow. Ooh, the game. Going to a ball game this with their dads. Classic. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. like an entire team runs on the field for there we go game. well no i think that's like that's organized that's like yeah that's like a january 6th moment if you have like a whole <laughs> yeah. group of people storming the field yes yeah the but Red I, Sox I'm, Orioles. I'm down to do that like i'm down to fund that yeah the january it, 6th of, of 10 year olds lone wolf <laughs> lone wolf's only you got pre-crime on your mind yeah we do we're doing the mount rushmore pre-crime all right so the only other uh what? baseball story i had was uh shohei otani just i know we brought it up before but it just happened again. It keeps happening to him. The classic tweet that we read from uh, this guy, like maybe the best tweet ever from uh, Metomic, who he said, every time I see an Angels highlight, it's like Mike Trout hit three home runs and raised his average to 528, while Shohei Otani did something that hasn't been done since Tungsten Arm O'Doyle of the 1921 Akron Groomsman as the Tigers defeated the Angels 8-3. to three. So yesterday, that was a tweet, a joke tweet. Yesterday, they tweeted out Shohei Otani with a two-run homer, and he's four for five with a homer and a triple and four RBIs today. Angels down eleven seven. Yeah, this is the new <laughs> this is the new Nick Castellanos. Yes, it's the new meme that like in baseball, anytime Shohei Otani does something like remotely remarkable, that tweet's going to go reviral. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think that should be nominated. We should make a sports tweet Hall of Fame. Yeah, and I think that. That's on the fast track to get there. That right now is like Juan Soto's career. Like that projects yes. to be a Ted Williams Hall of Fame tweet. Correct. That tweet will get brought up a bit, as long as Shohei's on the Angels because they, they got uh, – he went – in this series against the Mar Mariners, he went six innings, uh, two earned runs, eight strikeouts, and then went eight for 13 batting, and the Angels got swept. Yeah. So I think, it's just perfect. I think that tweet, the, um, the overtime hockey one by John Boyce – and yep. the, the fucking a man tweet. I think yeah. those right now are the three, and, maybe first ballots. And Kevin Durant's there's no relax champ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you log off. Yeah. You know, you log off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a log off battle. Yep. Um, so, PFT, we have. Well, there's one more thing oh, okay. that happened. Yeah. Uh, Vogelbach. Yes. Just got a double, and it's just always a treat to watch him run. He's the best. When I see him run, I sing to my. You remember that big boy grilling on the roof? Big mm -hmm. boy grilling on the roof. Yeah. That's what I hear in my brain as he's as he's rounding first base. Just incredible. Like he's got a body that's bigger than most fullbacks. Yes. Maybe like a, a offensive guard that plays college football. He's unapologetically fat. He's big. He's a professional athlete. He's just a big boy. Yeah. He grills on the roof. Yeah, and he uh, he also will be. And I, I, so I dipped into Mets Twitter last night because I bet on the Mets and they are just, they're, they're just a tortured, tortured brains left and right because it's, it's actually kind of similar to when the Cubs got good where it's like Mets fans know the Mets are good, yeah. but they're still the Mets. So they always are like, we're still the Mets, but we are good. So it's this tortured, like back and forth where they can trust the fact that they have good players, but also be like, we're the Mets and we'll always Mets. 
But um, it was very funny because like that that team Vogelbach has just the perfect doing something huge in late October moment. Oh yeah, like, yeah. he's written for it. I I can already see it. Like yeah. it, maybe even early October, maybe he, he goes nuts in in a wild card game, or well, they're probably not in the wild card game, but yeah. maybe he goes nuts in the first round of the playoffs, and then all the casuals come out, unlike us who yeah. are true seam heads. He's a, and he's like, who's this guy? He's a hero in waiting. Yes. Like everyone knows but that get, he will buy ha- stock. Yeah, buy he, stock in Vogelback right he now. He will have a big moment, and everyone who everyone who hasn't been watching baseball will be like, "Who's this fat guy? This is yep. incredible." And it, I'm wait. I'm ready for it because you like if the Mets. If you're a Mets fan and you obviously have hopes of winning the World Series this year, they're that good. The best sign of you guys winning the World Series is that you have Vogel back on your team because you need one of those guys. He's just built for October. That's yeah. a Halloween body. You just need one of those goofy guys who's going to do something fucking huge. Also, he's. I guarantee you, he's going to be an amazing presence to have during a World Series parade. Yeah, he's going to drink all the beers. He's going to take the fattest shit in the White House. He's going to. He's going to be just funneling shit, funneling beers. on, yes. on the uh, yes, with going he, down the Avenue of Americas. He's probably going to have an Europe. ice luge in the in the in the clubhouse after they win every series he's probably gonna be doing um like irish car bombs yeah like heavy cream shots <laughs> the best yeah the best all right so we also have patrick reed's lawsuit before we get to our mount rushmore pft i have not read this because you okay. said you wanted to wow us yeah so just a, a wow fr- us a friday reading yes. spelled r-e-e-d patrick reed's lawsuit against everybody really um he's suing the pga tour he's suing brandel chambliss Brand, yep. Brisley, Br- Brandy Chambly, and uh, his lawsuit is laugh out loud funny because he's been enduring abuse, and uh, people have been saying that you uh, that you support a tyrannical, murderous leader. But in his lawsuit, he said this would be akin to stating that LeBron James has aligned himself with a tyrann tyrannical, murderous leader. So right off Wait, the bat, so he's comparing himself to LeBron James. So he just hired a, a Twitter reply guy yes. for his lawyer. Yes, to be like, what about China? <laughs> What about the NBA? But, okay, this is the funniest part. So he has to specify the personal attacks that he's uh, suffered in this lawsuit. Can I say one thing? I, it, I wish that the lawyer had gone more Twitter reply guy and been like, he's it's akin to LeBron James, who is LeFraud, also known as LeFraud James, <laughs> 0-10 in finals. It's, yeah, it's equivalent to LaChina <laughs> and uh, Mr. LeBubble James. Yeah. But this is the funniest part of the lawsuit because he has to list specific examples of of abuse that he's endured from the fans at the direction of Brandel Chambly. This, this won't backfire. So uh, <laughs> these induced personal attacks include, but are not limited to, now on the T, the excavator. Because Ooh. he cheats, he digs out of the ground. Okay. You suck. You fucking suck. You jackass. You coward. Shovel. Why don't you dig a grave and bury yourself in it? You piece of shit. No one likes you. Everyone hates you, Reed. Good luck digging yourself out of this one. Where are your parents, coward? You cheater. Well, that one hurts. Cheat. Everyone hates you, cheater. You're going to miss this, you cheater. You cheat in college and on tour, and you're a piece of shit. That's a lot. That's a mouthful at the tee box. <laughs> Beat the cheater's ass. <laughs> Sorry, Webb, for having to play with the cheat. Who did you piss off? Why don't you introduce your children to their grandparents, you ungrateful bitch? <laughs> Ooh, nice. I like that guy. This is just a sampling of what defendants maliciously and intentionally cause and furthered with actual malice. These personal attacks occur frequently while Mr. Reed is actively preparing to make his golf shot or during the golf shot, much less thereafter as he is walking to his next golf shot, as well as lining up putts and making putts on the green, which putts require a high degree of concentration. Oh, that's so good. I love that he has he's kept meticulous notes. It, yeah, on, no, his wife. His wife has. Yeah. His you, wife has been standing behind him the whole time just writing all these in insults down you cheat in college on tour and you're a piece of shit (laughs) (laughs) that just rolls right off the tongue i i did i did see one other piece of it um and his i i want to meet his lawyer because his lawyer it it sounds like he's on true social a lot with the insults he threw in this lawsuit he also wrote uh in in this regard defendant chambly a former professional golfer who fell far short of ever rising to the accomplished <laughs> level of Mr. Reed and current analyst for Golf Channel. So he just like, just a reminder, Chambly sucks <laughs> at golf and Patch Reed doesn't. That's so awesome. Yeah. I, I kind of wish that it had uh, some language in the lawsuit of the, the hole-in-one press release. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Where he's like, uh, what did he say? 
It was a strong wind. It was a, yeah, it was a strong. <laughs> I made a uh, definitive. Uh, Reed made a hole in one. It took place on the seventh hole, which is playing 181 yards into a slight wind. He had a five iron, which sailed magnificently into a rather strong wind with approximately five feet of cut, whereupon it bounced twice. I'm a very Reed is a very modest individual, and you will have to say that he was bragging, and he doesn't like people who brag. <laughs> That's pretty much what his lawyer. I really want to meet this lawyer. He no, hired he, the best lawyer ever. I actually love sleazeball attorneys. Yeah, I think they're some of the most interesting characters in the world. As long as they admit that they're a sleazeball, they're so funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. like Florio. Yeah, Mr. Portnoy. Yep, the best. Jay Billis, the best sleazeball. Attorneys. Yes, yes, the the best. The ambulance chasers. Mm-hmm. Um, f- fucking hilarious. Like. Again, I don't, I don't think that's going to have the intended effect for Patch Green. I feel so, like the, I didn't even know he was called the excavator, but that's what I'm calling him. But now. listen, I want to be very clear because we do have a platform much like Brandel Chambly has. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to get sued by Patrick Reed's wife. So I, I do. What, no, I do. Bonk, whatever <laughs> no, you do, I do because it would be great for the show. No, whatever, if we got sued. whatever you do, Big Cat. Seriously, this is so that we can get it on the legal record. Do not say now on the T the excavator to Patrick Reed. Don't. Tell him he fucking sucks. Don't say good luck digging yourself out of this one. Whatever you do, don't say you cheat in college, you cheat on the tour, and you're a piece of shit to Patrick Reed. Do not say any of those things. But if you could figure out a way to make that into like a chant, that probably works. Don't say it. Don't call him an ungrateful you cheat bitch. In college and you cheat on tour. Don't call Patrick Reed an ungrateful bitch. <laughs> Whatever. You remember how we asked you guys not to call. Bryson Brooks, and you guys definitely didn't call him Brooks more after that. Don't say all these things to Patrick Reed. Please don't. Oh my God. What a guy. I'm going to miss him. I kind of listen. I love Patrick Reed in in a way that you would, that one would love like a a rascal dog that somebody else owned. Yeah. And you laugh at it shitting on the the carpet and chewing everything up. If we had to deal with him in any manner, we would hate him. But from afar, he is. So funny. And let's not forget, he's a big Imagine Dragons fan, too. That's facts. That's facts. And he didn't steal from his teammates in college. No, That's he, a fake story. Yep. And he doesn't cheat. He doesn't cheat. He's Ever. not a bitch. And his wife isn't a psycho with a burner account on Twitter. Nope. None of those things are true. We we defend Patrick. Captain Reed. America. We should actually add ourselves to the lawsuit against Brandley. I would be down. Yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. We're huge Patrick Reed fans, and you've hurt us. Yeah. Can we join the lawsuit? Can we just tack <laughs> our name? Can this be a class action lawsuit from the damages that... That I've felt having Patrick Reed's ego damaged by Brandless Chimbler. I'm sure I've bet on Patrick Reed at some point in the last like couple years, so I could just find that bet slip and be like, "Yeah, the, these insults hurt my my wager." That's true. If we had a real scumbag attorney, we could make one of those class action like it's bestest commercials. You have you lost a bet? betting on Patrick Reed because his feelings were hurt because of very unfair coverage by Brandel Chambly. Right. Well, then you are entitled to damages on your behalf. I'm in. Let's do it. And we'll take 75%. We got to get... We're right this, Jake, write that down for next time we have Mr. Portnoy on to see if we can we can sue for that. Um, okay, anything else in the sports world? Anything else going on? We have um, more preseason football games. The Yanks are back. Yeah, Walk off Grand Slam. The Yankees are back. Walk off Grand Slam. They've won their first game in like After six Chapman weeks. After blew it. Yeah. Well, we've talked enough about him on this show. Yes. Um, the oh, I was gonna say uh, the this weekend. Be careful of the preseason betting because everyone's just going to bet the overs after it went after thirteen and three. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be just. I'm I'm going to sit out, be smart because I know that I'll just lose my money in September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Um, but be careful. So I I did really well last week with the system of betting on the rookie head coaches in their very first games because they want to win those games. I think the move this weekend is to reverse that. And bet against Moneyline every rookie coach that won yeah. their first preseason game because they got that win under the belt. Now they're like, you know what? I just want to evaluate now. Now yeah. they're going to swing back in the other direction. And bet on the Ravens. So that's my sense. And bet obviously bet on the Ravens. Yeah, yes. 21 in a row or something like yep. that. It's it's insane. It's insane. They, they are, they're the boys of summer. The yeah. real boys of summer. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get to our Mount Rushmore. Is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Summer is full of official events like weddings, graduations, and annual 4th of July barbecues. But everyone knows the best parts of summer are the unofficial ones. This summer, Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial, celebrating those moments that truly make summer chill, like betting on the Ravens. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. 
The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. Summer chill starts with Coors Light. Make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or L.A. Enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash take. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 9-19-2022. Game ends 9-6-2022. 50 U.S. states and D.C. 21 plus. Void where prohibited. For rules, visit CoorsLightSummer.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Okay. Who won Mount Rushmore? Thank you to Coors Light. The best beer ever. In Golden, Colorado. I miss you, Golden, Colorado. I miss Colorado. Um... Just I do too. Great state. Recap I mean, coming Sunday. Yeah, recaps coming Sunday. Be be ready for it. There's a lot of Coors Light being drank, and there's uh, and any yeah. fake news that shows me missing any field goals is just that's classic CGI. Classic Hank Lockwood. Mm-hmm. I'll wear it. It's it's it would be funny. It would be funny if there were a ton of misses. But there, but it, it would be, be CGI. Well, also for the record, I just said I was going to make a forty-five yarder, and then you guys goaded me into trying a fifty-yarder, which I'm not equipped to do. Yeah, in it my was present you really state. had to pull your teeth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll see. I'm yeah, it'll be a, that's a great preview. Um, okay, Hank Mount is Rushmore. allergic to making anyone look good. In his head. It's, that's what I've realized. <laughs> what are you gonna say, Billy? Real quick, two, I didn't Photoshop the fucking making you look fat. Two yeah. Mount Rushmores ago, Chile got its first win of the season. Well, who finished second to Rosillo? I think we go with that. You guys. Oh, oh crazy. Weird. Um, well, we won Monday. We won crazy. a fucking wow. second place trophy. Okay. All right. So fine. Congrats. You know what, Jilly? You guys go You guys go first. You guys go first and you guys decide the order. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> we give them the first. They're like, oh, I don't know. Dude, yeah, last. this is great power, great responsibility right here. Yeah. Uh, we'll go last. Hank can go first. You guys go second. Okay. okay. So this is the Mount Rushmore of pre crime. Hank. Uh, all right, this one, you know, this one might cut deep to some AWLs, but it just it. Oh, opening bottles with your teeth. Ooh. Oh, dude, that's cool. I do that. It is. It is crazy. It, it it blows my mind. Glass bottles are not supposed like your teeth are your teeth. Those are those are valuable items of your body. You should not be opening bottles with them. No, it's I, fact, your teeth it's, are your it's, teeth. It's concerning. Okay, it's not for everybody, but. If you know it's how for to criminals. No, if you know how to do it properly, it's pretty badass. I I would I would agree with Hank in the fact that there is a screw loose if you do it. Why? Yes. Right. Right. Like some people, I have I have a friend that would do it. Like, do you have a bottle? I have a bottle opener, and he's like, No, let me do it with my teeth. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. And yeah. it's like, why? Oftentimes, you if find you yourself without a bottle have... opener, and then it's a great skill for me to have. In the but right, my thing is the it, the pre crime is the people that do it willingly and yes. like for fun. It's yes. it's cool to watch, but it's also pre crime. Like if you're just going into your fridge, grabbing a beer, and opening it with your teeth, pre crime. I, I agree yeah. with that. Okay, I unnecessarily opening a beer bottle. I do this teeth. all the time. I know I'm on this team. I literally do this all the time. Um, I feel a little bad about it, but it's it's cool, isn't it? I don't it? think this is a pre. I don't know, pre crime. Pre crime's like a little more creepier. That's not like creepy. Well, I mean, embrace debate. You can make your pick when it's time for your team to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Our first pick. We're going to go with owning a snake as a pet. Mm-hmm. Anyone who owns snakes, fucking pre-crime city. You're just waiting. You're just waiting yeah. for the snake to just escape in your house and then kill you in your sleep. It's also an animal that will never love you. Right. Why do you want to... You're basically having like... I don't know, a prisoner in your own house that wants to kill you at all times. The biggest bonding moment you have with your pet is to feed it mice to eat. That's well, so fucked up. What, no, another bonding moment that you have is when it's trying to kill you yeah. and it's wrapping itself around you. Yeah, slowly. Go ahead, Billy. Defend owning no, a snake. No, there's, a, there's like, they're like cuddling for body warmth because they're cold-blooded and you're warm-blooded. That's, I don't know if that's mm-mm, the truth. Mm-mm, mm-mm, that, that's why they mm-mm. like to like rest on. If you own a snake, I just assume at some point you will commit a crime. I've it's it's a part of your DNA. You own a snake? I owned a and, horn snake. And, and you've will, never committed yeah, a crime. And you are definitely number one in this room for committing a crime. Ooh, what? That's actually a good question. How mm-hmm. many crimes? I thought I was a cop. Well, you're a crooked cop. <laughs> that's what you are. <laughs> You are. Okay. Owning a snake is definitely a pre It's move. bad. Yeah. I don't trust people who own snakes. Can't can't be around them. Fucked up. I and, think and I'm sure there'll be some snake people who reply, and guess what? Your replies go on deaf ears. Well, you know what's crazy is that everybody has visited, like, one apartment of somebody that has a snake. Yeah. And just one time, and you never go back. Yes. I would appreciate people that tweet me pictures of their cold-blooded pets. I appreciate them. Tweet them at me. Okay. Please. 
I mean, we're not indicting frogs here. We're Even just the, like what you know, when people say that's cold blooded, they say it for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's been up. there's been a lot of anti reptile slander dates back to the Bible. It's uh, it's kind of mean. French what? people being why? called frogs. Oh, why? Why? Is why it slander? Would, or is yeah. it because it's they're facts. Bad? It's facts. I just think we shouldn't be judging. We'd still be li living in the Garden of Eden if it wasn't for that fucking snake. No, that was that bitch Eve. Yeah. Well, she got corrupted by the snake. <laughs> uh, okay. You guys first pick. Killing small animals. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's a I mean, crime. by, by yeah, that's, textbook that's definition, yeah. no. that is a crime. That's a crime. I was thinking about that too, but that it, like arson, like if you light a fire as a kid, yes, no, that's, that's a, crime. a crime. You can like kill. You're allowed to like kill mice and rabbits and stuff. Like that's totally legal. Can you? Uh, are you allowed to kill a mammal for fun? Yeah. You you've killed mice, but like take pleasure in it. I, another thing. I know. I set a mouse trap. Yeah. I didn't kill it. The trap killed it. But you're allowed to kill mice. That's legal with your bare hands. So, but you're yes. saying it's pre-crime. But a rabbit. That's pre-crime. This is like so. Is killing mice is, and is, men is, shit. Is setting is setting up a, a mouse trap pre-crime? No, but, but that's killing, killing small animals. Right, but you guys kill them. What kind of? I don't, you give us a please, list of yeah. the animals, small animals. For an that example, you would say chipmunks, mice, rabbits. You want to say dogs? No, because that's illegal. Mm hmm. Okay. That's illegal. I don't know if it is frogs. I, when, frogs. When, oh, that's scientists you. are criminals. Okay. What? All right. Yeah. I mean, no. That that no. It, it's a good pre-crime because it's literally that's that's the only point. That's it's, how serial. We're not arguing start. that it's not a pre-crime move. It just also is might be a crime crime. It's no. actually an interesting thing to think about. Like, what are you what are you allowed to kill with your bare hands, and when does it become a crime? Mm-hmm. Because I I, th I think you're right. You probably are allowed to kill a mouse, but you're probably not allowed to like pest. shoot a rabbit with like I a feel BB like gun. Yeah, you can, the crime like is cats. You like don't fuck with cats. Have you watched The Sopranos? Yeah, but in like a, I guess it depends on where you are. Go cook it, it up in a nice ragu. Just depends on the legality of the BB gun. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a good pick then, because it is fucked up to kill small animals when you're a small person. Not fucked up to run on a field. I, I this is one I wish Jake could do all four picks because I think he doesn't even understand. Pre-crime. Crime. Right. And right. like getting in the mind of a criminal. Right. So how is he going to understand what goes in before? Not returning your library books. <laughs> All right. Cheering in the press box. <laughs> Our second pick is going to be parents who put their kids on leashes. Oh, okay. yeah. That's yeah. a good pick. Now, so you think parents or do you think the kids that are on? I think, I think it could go both. either way. Like if you're <laughs> yeah. a kid that yeah. gets carried around on a leash your entire life. You're probably going to fuck it's some just stuff up. An interesting visual. It is. I understand that if you're in crowds, you don't want them running off, but mm. just like, I don't know. Uh, I don't, yeah. A leash on a kid is fucked up. I think maybe the only exception is if you have like seven kids. Yeah. And they're all, I don't know, four or five years old and. But then you can then you could do the I think there's a difference. Putting them on an actual leash is a pre crime. Doing the the rope hold is fine. Yeah, you know, like you see if the you kids, have a rope and everybody holds. Yeah, on the rope. like yeah. in elementary school, they're walking around the block and everyone's yes. holding on the rope. Also, just on leash talk, uh, putting a cat on a leash is also a fucked up move. I've seen that a couple times. That's yeah. a weird one. Putting anything on your cat really. Yeah, like clothes, anything, mittens. Um, okay, bread that can be cute. Clothes on. Animals Why don't you prove it on a, on a cat? Yeah. Why don't you get a cat then? Maybe I will. Okay. Um, our second pick, I can't believe this one lasted this long, actually, uh, for pre-crime is being born in northern Austria on April 20th, 1889. <laughs> mm -hmm. Big time pre-crime. Pre-crime. Actually, like just pre-death penalty. Mm -hmm. Just kill that baby. Hank, you got it? You would found you, him? Would you, you kill that him? baby? It's nature versus nurture. Would you? Oh, you would become oh. that baby's mom. Yeah, you would hug that baby. <laughs> if I had been your mom, yeah, World War Two would have never Nothing, started. Like there was a lot of people born in that time period that were fine. Yeah, there was a. Yeah, you're doing. More, the, you're doing the like. There was a lot of good Nazis too. Yeah, not all Germans. <laughs> well, Austrians. Well, well yeah, he was I mean, also they, he went to yeah, Germany. Yeah, shortly. But thereafter. I'm saying like there was probably a lot of people born on April 20th that day that. Did not turn out to be that, a, that's collateral damage. Let's just so. say, in terms of like, uh, like the percentage ROI is probably on, more of yeah, mm, there's probably more per square capita of criminals in different places than that place. But ROI on that date in that place is very bad, right? That's that's true, yeah, yeah. If we're just doing the math here, if this is the trolley problem, maybe yeah, you gotta maybe, bomb you that know, hospital. Maybe someone had like 10 kids, but that's not gonna, yeah, it doesn't kind of. Yeah. The H man kind of outweighs all of the people born that Wait, day. Wait, Billy's about to do something incredibly smart. What were you saying? No, come on. Come now on, you Billy. have to say it. We're you on a show. To, you had the shit. You have grand. to say it. He commanded crimes 
No, oh, Billy. My no, God. no. I okay, you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. Okay, I, I didn't. No, I didn't think it was gonna be that bad no. either. That was really bad. Okay, uh, Hank. <laughs> uh, coaching a youth bas- women's basketball team without having a daughter on the team. Mm, okay. Good one. I think that goes for any it's gender sports. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Without, yeah, like even what's what's even no, crazier? There, there's like crime. There's like foot. You know, players that used to play that are like. You know, come back to start or whatever. But if here, so, what's the worst? Like if you're pre-crime? the head coach of a yeah. of a you know, any any really eighteen or under girl like women's team, and you're not, you have no relation well, to yeah, anyone like, on the team. Like I, that's, I think that's you could, crazy. You could do it as like a high school basketball. High coach. school, high school is fine. High Youth, school and yeah. JV is fine. But like doing like if you're the little league coach and you don't have a kid on the team, Weird. that's fucked. Unless you're a former professional athlete. And you're coaching. That can be kind of cool. Where yeah. You're just like trying to get all your aggression out. I mean, it's not cool, but it's still like, you know, not but, as creepy. But you you would have had to have had. I think I can give even a little bit of a pass if you had a kid on the team. And like, you know, say Little League, for example, your kid's now 14, but you kept on co- like that. I might be like, OK, I guess you're just hanging on. But to have like no relation to the team pre-crime. Yeah. I'm going to say that if you're like. A, a youth women's gymnastics coach and you don't have a daughter you should automatically go to jail mm-hmm. 100% like Without you know how fucked up you have to be to be a gymnastics coach in general yep yep or dance coach yeah yeah okay Billy you got another profound thought after you just tried to absolve Hitler no, of all no, his no, wrong doings not, don't say that that's not what I was saying Larry Nasser was not that bad of a guy yeah. no, stop, <laughs> okay stop, here we go stop uh, uh, Hank, your next one. Opening an offshore Isabel. banking account. That, uh, that is a crime. Uh, no, it's not a no, crime. No, it's not a crime. Definitely not a crime. But it's something you do before a crime. Not necessarily. Okay. Or after I, Okay, so it is. Why would, you open is an, right. why would you open an offshore banking account, Big Hank Matt? is right. Why would you open an Hank offshore banking right, account? Hank is right, but it's kind of a cool pre-crime because it means a- you're just going to have a lot of money. No, I do not. Does anybody in this room have an offshore I bank used account? To, I used to, back way in the, back in the day, uh, when... Gambling wasn't yeah. legalized. I used to have to go to Western Union to send yep. my paycheck to Aruba. offshore. Ka-ching. Accounts. Whole thing. Thank that you. Sounds like crime. That sounds exactly like crime. Well, sounds like account. you needed to yeah, open the account like, yes. so you could. No, I didn't have an account. I would have to send the money. You guys are now talking about like busting people for tax evasion. I mean, pre-crime. that's crime. I'm not talking about busting people. He's right. Max I'm is one of those eighty-seven thousand IRS if you're gonna, agents. Uh, again, Big Cat literally proved the point. Gambling was illegal. He wanted to gamble, which was at the time a crime. So he had to open an offshore bank account before he could commit the crime. I didn't crime open the account. I, there wasn't an account. I had to send it to an account. Right. Yeah. But right. If you're no, op- I, if you're opening an account, then you got that's big look, money. I, and it's I, like you're trying to avoid taxes or you're trying to I, wash money. I'm gonna agree with Hank. Like if if one of us walked in and was like, Hey, just uh open up a new Swiss account, you'd be like, Huh? Yeah. What are you doing with yeah. that? Yeah, right, right. No, I'm that's going fair. to hide that's a money, pick. which that's is a good crime. Pick. That's a good pick. Yeah, you know who else had a Swiss banking account, Hank? So thank you for feeding into mine. Um, all right. Next pick. Good picks, guys. I'm just saying there was a lot of people born that day. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this one is um, we're going to do uh, interacting with porn stars online, whether it be the comments section or buying them like gifts off their Amazon yes. gift list. Yeah. Big time pre-crime. Yeah. There's a bunch of things that fall into this one. The Amazon gift wish list thing is just bizarre. Um Retweeting porn stars online is fucking weird. It's like I want other people to see this porn too. Um, liking porn tweets is also very strange. And then replying and be like, "Show feet, baby." Yeah, that's all of the above. Or like, "You look really hot today." Remember that red sweater guy from the debates? Ken Bone. Ken, Ken Bone. Bone. Well, no, he just was no, into pregnant former porn. Former takey presenter. Yes, former takey presenter. He was just into into prego porn. The Amazon you, gift lists are just wild. It's like I'm gonna buy my favorite porn star, uh, like a vacuum cleaner for her house, um, and hopefully she'll fuck me. Um, one of the saddest things I've ever seen. This kind of goes in the, the same direction. Um, there was this girl that I knew in college, and she was nice. She had a boyfriend, and she had a friend that was just always around her and creeping on her. And he bought her a vibrator Oof. just to be like, hey, I think that like this is a very sexually healthy thing for you to have. And he was just the biggest simp in the world. Yeah. It's like ultimate simp behavior. Yes. Is, is yes. buying something. Never buy a woman anything is the moral of my story. Um, That was Stephen Che. His brain is broken. I, he said that someone someone brought in lunch today, empanadas. And he's like, do you want me to grab some for everyone? And I was like, yeah, just leave it outside. We're recording. And he just opened the door. So his brain is broken. Sorry for the 
interruption there by Stephen Shea. Um, yeah, that's that's fucked up, PFD. I know. That's pre-crime. Pre-crime. All right. Going around the snake. Our turn? Yeah. So we're going with going on 4chan. Which mm. you do. You do I all do the time. I do not go on 4chan. You said, I, I think literally okay, so two days ago, you said that you have been on 4chan. So we, we yeah, have killing I- frogs and going on 4chan. <laughs> Billy, are no. you just giving us your manifesto? No, 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 no. Come on. Relax. I don't go on 4chan. For the record, you can look through my computer. What's 4chan? <laughs> I've never heard of it. Looking it's it a up. terrible place. It's oh, like they're going to come after your ass now. Oh, I've been fighting them already. Oh, so you, but you haven't been on. No, I, no, no. Where are you fighting them? I thought you were supposed to. Aren't you like anti regulations? Yeah. Like, you know, that's one, yeah, of the last, last, just, one of the last safe spaces on the internet. It, it, Free speech, like, baby. Yeah. It's, it's pretty. F- Actually, well, even worse is 8chan. Yeah, it gets fucked up. It is pretty. Yeah, I mean, it's if you're going on there, you're going. If you're, you're going, going on, on any for, chan, yeah, I feel like it, it is progressing though. Like 4chan might not be as I don't know anything about 4chan it. 4chan is not it, as bad as 8chan. So yeah, so the, the higher the number of the chan, the worse the people there are. Yep. Is that fair to say? Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, your next pick. Finish this up, Jake. Do you like this one, Billy? Yes, we need Jake. Onlychans.com. That should be the next Jake's. website. Jake's. Yeah. Oh, to get no. the dankest oh, memes. Yeah. Oh, do you do that? If it's hot, yeah. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was figuring out if they were gonna pick eating pizza with a knife and fork. Yeah, but sometimes you do it on the top. Okay. So I'm gonna do uh, <laughs> scra- scraping. Uh, yes, yes, scraping yes, yes. cheese off of it. Scraping no, cheese no, off no, pizza. No. <laughs> scraping uh, cheese off. Drinking straight tequila. Okay. No. What? 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 <laughs> okay. Both. Wait, yeah. Are just bad give them picks. five slots. I'll get. Yeah. Give what? you guys get both those picks. Those are so bad. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not afraid. I mean, that of is so people do that every single day. Yeah. If you're gonna scrape the cheese off. Why are you ordering the Jake, pizza? Jake, you're the king of like watching your yeah, figure yeah, and like making, pizza. you know, I want to, you know, I want to eat something bad, but I don't want to eat too bad. So I'm going to scrape the cheese off. Like, is that, is that's that right up your by the way, pizza. The fact that, that, the, that Billy makes all these 4chan comments and then immediately like scraping cheese off pizza. That sounds like some deep state, like Hillary Clinton pizza yeah. gate shit that you guys are. What does that mean? Scraping cheese off pizza? Like, <laughs> not, Billy? Uh, like just taking the cheese off the pizza before eating it. You just eat the dough and. Some leftover sauce. Okay, and then also you get so drinking like s- drinking tequila, which yeah, is like not stick. even close to pre crime. So, so taking no, a shot drinking, of tequila. No, no, taking a shot of tequila. No chaser. No nothing. Just not drinking tequila just taking a shot of tequila. So I, t- I you're did just, pre- you just never had good tequila. Yeah. So in ever your, in your eyes, like Kenny Chesney is Hitler. Then yeah. This is the, the of all your twenty three year old takes. This might be your most twenty three no. year old take to be like tequila. Gross. No, I drink tequila. <laughs> I just the thing is I've been told it's a pre crime when I do it. Wait, by I, who? Did you go with Jake? No. Yeah. I just was like Wait, so in your mind you you drink tequila. I had to think of something quickly because Jake was about to scrape cheese off pizza. You crushed it. Yeah. yeah. You got why <laughs> he said that before. He yes. said tequila before the pizza. Yeah, thing. that's true. That why? is Okay, so those are your last two picks. Good job, guys. You we'll Fuck. give you we'll give you five picks on this one. Uh okay, Jesus. PFT, our last pick. <laughs> Okay, um, our last pick is adult autograph seekers. Mm-hmm. We've seen them recently at Bill's training camp yes, when they were just like know. throwing shit yes, onto the Hank. field, especially the ones that show up with their suitcases filled with stuff and they run their operation like Oliver Twist and they send their little orphans out to go get autographs and bring them back. That um, is a crime. Yeah, those guys are... What? How's that a crime? They're hustling. Ex- they're trying to make a buck. No, no, that is... They, that is Adult autograph seekers, if you just r- wrangled them all up and like had a conference with them, you'd be like, crime, 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 crime. Can I, I change? No, so what uh, we're saying is like doing doing this act. Yes, I, I want to hear crime, what you say, but you can't. But change I guarantee, it. like Big Cat says, if you look at the average profile, yes. they're committing all sorts of other Correct. crimes. Correct. Correct. They got their fingers in a lot of pies. They are most likely to commit a crime, which is pre crime. Uh, what? Go ahead, Billy. This, I'm replacing our last. No, you yeah. Can, I mean, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll let you add on. So okay, yeah, yeah, even another right, pick on that last yeah, you get one. Six. Keep talking. Getting a massage. Nope. Yep. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There we go. You've never gotten a massage? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's making a Deshaun Watson joke. Uh, I've never got I've never gotten a massage where you like go in a private room. Ugh, gross. Fine. Someone put so what, you're just doing like orgy show massages? Up in the lobby, no, no, like lie <laughs> down in the lobby chairs and, in, like, and the they come out to you. Like the training room. You get massages like with with like 40 it's a gang bang of people getting massages. <laughs> this is another That's another 23 year old take. Massages are pretty cool. And private, Honestly, extremely yeah. private. Yes. 
like training massages I get, but I don't know. It's kind of what like, about a couples massage? What? Don't your body gets stressed? I know it's kind of. I don't know. You're like a muscle this guy. This is Isn't, I love. Like, I love you, Billy, because this is like I'm. I'm like, just getting to watch to a, a like room. what your my what your idea of like alpha and tough is is so funny because it's like you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna I'm write. Just, I mean, I was making it to Sean Watson. Joke. You're gonna write us a letter when you're our age and be like, I'm sorry. Somebody, like everything you guys are right. Like getting massages, pretty nice. I, I, I know I bet it's nice, nice, but like pre crime. I literally told Billy that yesterday. I was like, right now, when you're my age, you're gonna look back at yourself and be like, wow, I didn't know it all. Yeah, no, I knew nothing. <laughs> I knew nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I get the joke. There are some people that have replied to me when I talk about Deshaun Watson, be like, what have you you ever been to a massage parlor, man? You ever got a rub and tug? It's like, no, no, I haven't. So, <laughs> I, I literally have not. Yeah, if, if someone's going to get like massages constantly, it's kind of weird. Agreed. I I would say like I'm not constantly. defending Deshaun Watson. What he did was fucked up. But again, <laughs> there is far more athletes, especially high, like right, football players, that room, need yeah. massages. Well, in the training room, like Deshaun wrong. Watson is the outlier of like scumbags that like fuck I, like and, was an asshole. But like, there's a lot of athletes that like massages are good. Massage? I, I but that. But that's also like that. I'm not a training athlete. Like if my muscle, <laughs> if I was working my muscles, like every every time I've got, I've, I've probably gotten, gunned myself. I've probably gotten five massages in my life. Every time I've gotten one, I've been like, I should do that more because I feel fucking way better. Like my neck isn't stiff. My uh, my shoulders don't feel like they're holding everything. Like, and it's standard practice for for athletes. Yeah, I should I I should get more massages. I used to get deep tissue massages all the time. When there I we played, go. When I played baseball Look in college, I'm a little surprised that you haven't actually. Wow. How bad. How good of an athlete oh. were you? Let's go, back girl. I got massages in the training room. Oh wow! In front of everybody. Wow! But like, I you, got massages, just not. So they knew you weren't gay. I, I think it, <laughs> no. I think it's fine. Like getting massages is a completely normal thing to do. Correct. It, now, but if you become a massage guy that yeah. gets them all the time, that is weird. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have six. Back girl, sounds like you were a pretty good college athlete. Uh, one year college baseball. How many dingers? Three dingers. Damn. I was the Matt Stairs of college baseball. Oh, hell yes. Pinch hitter, pinch hitter who only tried to hit bombs. I love it. That's fucking... I like that. All right. Uh, you guys have six picks. Do you want to add a seventh? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Downloading Tor browser. Okay. Which you probably also have done. <laughs> I I've never even heard of that. <laughs> well, where, like, where did you... You always talk about the about deep that. web, Billy. You're a deep web guy. <laughs> this is great. Do you have another one? Can you have another one? So so we always joke around with Billy about how every time he talks, he incriminates himself, even when, like, if we're interrogating we're him about, about something. In this one, it's explicitly pre-crime, and you just keep listing things that you have done. Yes. I have never downloaded it before. <laughs> oh, how do you know man. what it is? Because I know what it's used for. How? To get to the Silk Road. Because I watched the documentary. I think you I think you have downloaded encrypted browsers. No. You're Mr. Duck Duck, Duck Go. Yeah, like yeah. if you're telling me you haven't bought steroids off one of these websites, I'm calling bullshit. I haven't. Okay. Hey, you want an eighth. This is the last one you can get. Guys, you, would you like an eighth? Jake? Empty Nothing? the clip, Billy. No, okay. let Jake go. Let Jake go. Come on. Jake, empty the clip. Jake, come on. Give us one last I actually one. don't have anything. Billy, on. Billy had one more. Yeah, let the chopper Billy say. Billy had Billy. one more? Well, yeah, you emphasized it. But re- oh, watching anime. Okay. Oh, my God, right. dude. Nice. Anime is great. <laughs> okay, oh, you're an anime guy. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. I mean, it's like, it's it's entertain. It's a show. Yeah, like it's yeah. a form of show. Huge I've never overlap into it. of four chan and anime. Yeah, yeah. I've never. I don't think I've ever watched an anime. I I mean I I watched Dragon Ball Z as a kid, which I learned after the fact is an anime, but I fucking love that show. All right, Hank, your team's last pick. Uh, we're gonna go with eating fish for lunch in the office. Ooh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Should I be like a crime. It. Yeah. Should be a, yeah, should it be a should real be crime. a real crime. Yes, it's definitely pre crime. Yes. Like you just have no standards or like you know, empathy for any of your coworkers or peers. Yep, yep. And you're likely to commit a crime afterwards. What yeah. about like a fried fish sandwich that you order from I don't know Popeyes or something? Fillet fish. That's not as bad. Yeah, no. It's, you're talking tuna fish. You're, you're talking, talking like actual fish, salmon. I'd like say heated up. I'd say yeah. tuna salads. Okay. Yeah, tuna salads fine. Okay. Anything in the microwave. Yep. Sushi's fine, right? Sushi's, Sushi's fine. fine. Yep. yep. Yeah, Hot yeah. I would fish. say like if you order something from Popeyes, yeah. But like if you're getting McDonald's fillet of fish for lunch, that is that's kind of pre crime. Could be Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Um, which could also be pre crime. Correct. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, anything we missed? Anything we missed? I had uh, uh, wearing socks during sex. That's just a weird thing that I feel like 
I don't know. There's something going on there. Like it, Billy, it, do you do that intentionally wearing? Yeah, socks. like yeah, because like, I'm not going to take off my happens. socks. Yeah, but like sometimes you're just you know, yeah, just being like I'm going to keep my socks on because we're having sex. You know That's who does that? Who? Nelly. Ooh. Nelly says like when Nelly's fucking, it's only the socks and the chain that yeah. stays on. Uh, getting really into clowns, or being a clown, or being a clown. John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Uh, owning more than two cats. Mm-hmm. I had. Yep. Listening to insane clown posse. I don't know. You're not. You're not a ninja. You're not a juggalo. No. Billy just. I, I, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> ICP, ICP is definitely pre crime. I think ICP the the juggalo community they get a bad rap. Yeah, I think they they're do. very positive. They're welcoming. Yeah, they're very welcoming. I think you need to open your. We should send Billy to gathering of the juggalos. That would go well. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, uh, buying low top Air Force black Air Force ones. Yep. I agree. That yeah, one. that's definitely pre crime. High tops are fine. Uh, the people whose entire personality is that they really go all out at Christmas time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Pre crime. Um, ignoring a dog when it's trying to be friendly to you. Eddie. Eddie. Mm hmm. If a dog comes up and like snuggles and you just completely act like the dog's not there. Yeah. Jail. Yeah. Being coached by Urban Meyer. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, oh, damn. That's a great one. Whose pick was that? I was try. I asked for like a. We should think of an Aaron Hernandez one, and, and memes sent out back. That was Damn, a great pick a great by pick. memes. I can't great believe pick. you iced him out. Uh, if you're pick. a guy and you get your nipples pierced, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing you guys are kink shamers. Doing baby talk to like uh, animals that you don't own, like you're not your or pet. your or your significant other or your significant other. Baby talk Publicly. definitely, yeah, but yeah. Public wait, baby talk. Wait, what if what if you see a dog? If Whitey was in here and I went up to Whitey, I go, "Who's a good boy?" That. You're if you keep on going though, like that, just one line, sure. But yeah. like, if you go full baby talk to a dog that y is not your dog, I think that's kind of pre crime. Because I always have to ask a dog who. The yeah, good that's boy is. That, uh, a simple question. It's not pre crime. But if you keep on going, you're like, oh, wait, you have a good day today. Yo, Whitey, what you doing, Wade? Who, who's, fluff, <laughs> who's fluffy wheel tail is yeah, this? Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's your fluffy tail. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, that's yeah, you're right. Crime. I want to lock myself <laughs> yes, off right now. Yes. Um, if you're a certified elite level reviewer on Yelp, mm. it's pre crime. Yeah. yeah. Although those people are kind of the silent guardians of the internet, in a way. <laughs> in a way. In a way. Um, okay. Anything? Unironically else? tweeting at airlines. Yep. Yep. That big time pre crime. Pre big time pre crime. Being like or. Er, er, Unironically complaining to any type of uh, like account on Twitter that you know mm -hmm. trying to get like free shit. Chrissy Teigen uh, owning a puppet. No, you're talking about um, what's her name? Kelly Kapoor. Kelly from the Kapoor. Office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I forget yep, her yep. name. She did that. Uh, yep. If you own a puppet, Mindy Kaling. You Mindy Kaling. You own a puppet. Yeah. Jail. Puppet. Puppet and multiple puppets. Or yeah, yeah ventriloquist. That's an art. That's yeah. a big. That's mess. an art form. Yeah, that's a pre-crime. Um, okay, good Mount Rushmore. Uh, taking socks off on a plane was the other one. Oh, oh dude, good, I saw a guy the other day. I do day. take my shoes off, though. There was a guy the other the day. On. I think it was when we were flying back from Denver. Socks and shoes off, went to the bathroom. Oh. Ooh. It was wild. I was like, what is going on? I do. I, I think I the, the Chicago guys did something, and I was defending. I do take my shoes off because I fall uh, asleep. Flight over and, over two three hours, I think. Yeah, like I'm. I always fall asleep, and I for, for whatever reason it's easier to fall asleep with your shoes off. Yeah, I uh, I don't like that. I don't like that move. I think a long long distance flight, you can take your shoes. off. I think off. shoes. But stay like that's on. you're saying, your socks are like sock. My socks yeah. are clean. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just not a foot guy. Maybe if I could see. If you brought slippers onto a plane, you change into your slippers. Just like put something over your feet. Socks. Yeah. I mean, I understand. That's, that's, I understand how yes, illogical correct. what I'm socks. saying is, but there's just something to me about seeing somebody in socks on a plane where I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. I um, wish they had some some more fabric on there. Okay, let's get to Terry McLaurin, uh, Washington Commanders wide receiver. Before we do that, PFT, you had a quick word from one of our sponsors. Yeah. Before we get to Scary Terry, he's presented by Sling TV. It's college football season, which means that you need Sling TV, where you can watch unbeatable college football coverage starting at just 35 bucks a month. Get everything you love about college football. The rivalries, the marching bands, the bowl games, the theme songs, conference power rankings, all of it with Sling. Plus, Sling has all the big games on the biggest channels like ESPN, The Deuce, ESPN3, SEC Network, ACC Network, Fox, and... That's right, the Big Ten Network, USC versus Purdue. You're going to get it on Sling for all the best prices. And the best part is getting Sling is easy. It's easy to set up, even easier to use. You can stream on any device, record up to 50 hours with included DVR space, 
Plus, you won't get locked into a long-term contract. So if you're looking for the perfect place to spend your Saturdays, you need to take a look at Sling, where you can get everything you love about college football for the best price. Check out Sling.com for special offers. Sling, the live TV you love for a price you love. Try Sling out today. And now here he is, future Super Bowl champion, Terry McLaurin. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest, wide receiver from the Washington Commanders, Terry McLaurin. Uh, Terry, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. I know you probably are sick of talking about it, but I have to start with a congratulations mm-hmm. for your new contract. Uh, appreciate that. Seventy-one appreciate million. That. What? I know it's a lame question to ask, but I think everyone yeah. kind of loves to think like, what would happen if I had, you know, that if I put ink to paper on a contract like that? What was that? Yeah. What was that feeling like? And did you buy anything really cool? Man, it was it was crazy to to sign that contract and um, to finally hear from my agent like the deal was done. Because I don't think a lot of people can appreciate how far that process like how far you get to that actual signing the contract there's so much that goes into that and so to be able to have that done and to be like like dang like my family is i could take care of my family i could take care of my future family i can do more in my community um and i'll be somewhere where like i'll have security you know what i mean so like just having that feeling was was crazy i haven't really bought i haven't bought anything for myself yet like it's really just I've kind of tried to let the money cool off for a little bit. Um, I like that. <laughs> I did a few things for my parents, but for myself, I haven't did anything yet. And it's it's especially cool for a guy like you who wasn't, you know, a first round draft pick who doesn't mm-hmm. get that initial pop, and you're playing in the NFL for three years, and everyone knows, you know, NFL careers don't last forever, and you're not right. making that, you know, I think everyone assumes like, oh, Terry McLaurin, he's awesome, he must be rich. And you still had to wait a couple of years to have that moment. So it's yeah. it's congratulations again. It's awesome, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was well deserved, beyond well deserved. So I, I'm a Washington Commanders fan. I used to be a Redskins fan. Then for Love a while, that. I was a football team fan. Um, so I appreciate everything that you've done on the field these last few years. It's been fun to watch. Are you are you still getting used to the new team name? Or did you? St- I'll put it this way: I like yeah. the football team. I like saying like yeah. we're a football team. We don't need a candy ass mascot. We're a football team. We play football. Do you still miss that? Yeah. Uh, this has been my third team in three years. That was my third team in three years. So, like, you you never really got used to any of them for myself. But, like, I mean, I, I'm just hoping that, you know, people can rally around this some way, shape, or form. I, but I think that at the end of the day, you got to win. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, we could be called the, the Flying Ducks as long as we win games, man. Like, I think that's extremely important. But also, like, not to diminish the history of Washington and like the prestige of which they, which they had at one, at what, in one point of, in history, like having Doug Williams in our, in our building and you get to see and talk to him and hear his wisdom all the time. So like, no matter what the team name is, I, I, I just want to get back to the, what that standard used to be. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that um, when, when the name came out, Everybody, somebody was going to roast it no matter what because it's a yeah, new name. Yeah. If you look around the league, the the names that exist right now, if they came out as new team names, people would be like the New York right. Giants. What what the hell kind of name is that? You know. But if right. you start winning football games, then I think everybody's going to be happy about it. Um, no doubt. And the jerseys look sick on Sunday too, or on Saturday. Yeah. I like the new yeah. Commanders uniforms. Yeah, the white on white was pretty cool, and uh, I think the helmets, man. I I think the helmets need to get a little bit more love. Like it's it's super sleek, but like. When the light hits it the right way, like those are some pretty, pretty good helmets. So um, I think, you know, we'll get to see the blacks this year. Obviously, we'll have the maroon before too long. So, um, you know, I think I think the colors will be really good for us. Is it true? Like, look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Like I I always I do a lot of my gambling on uniforms, like how, how, you know, if someone drops a a crazy new uniform and it's like, this looks great. I mean, I, I remember uh, what the Oregon versus Auburn in the national championship. I didn't win, but Oregon's yeah. uniform is like they can't lose in these. No doubt. I think I think that that comment right there is a hundred percent facts. Like you look good, you feel good, you play good. It's the swag, it's the aura you come when you walk into the building. Like I, it's big to have a nice walk-in fit. You know yeah. what I mean? If we're on the way, have a nice suit, look real clean, and then you put on that put on that jersey like you want it to fit nice you want you know every guy has their different accessories that like what they like to put on but I definitely think that's part of the routine at least for me um you feel good you feel confident and you're ready to go out there and make some plays so yeah. so I had a question about your uh beginning at Ohio State 
Um, yeah. Is it true that Urban Meyer said that he, he didn't give you an offer because he said you couldn't catch? Uh, <laughs> I saw that circling around a little bit. Yeah, I think – so I was in his office, and he he basically was like, you know, look, we like your speed. We like the person you are. We don't really know too much about you because I got invited to a camp on, like, I think Coach Combs, who was the DB coach, he was my recruiter. So he came to my high school early June. And by that next week, I was visiting Ohio State. So they didn't really know who I was. And I finished the workout. I was a fast kid at the camp. I was killing it. And then uh, Coach Meyer was like, you going like Coach Combs was like, you're going to get this, this, or this. And, and, but usually you don't get the middle, the middle thumb. And, and so, of course, I go in there. I'm super excited. I'm thinking about to get offered. And I get the, the thumbs in the middle. I'm looking around like, yo, what, <laughs> what, what's going on? Like, I, I thought I wasn't supposed to get that. So, like, he basically was like, like your hands aren't – he really said your hands aren't good enough uh, right now to be able to feel comfortable enough extending you an offer. But this is what I tell you. Because if you go home um, – catch 200 footballs a day, come back in two weeks, you'll work out in front of me as soon as you get here. Um, and we can go from there. Like there's a chance you can have an offer. And like, at first I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like disappointed because I felt like all the boxes that I needed to check at that moment, um, based off of what coach Cones was telling me, the feelings I was getting from the coaching staff, I thought I was going to get an offer. So at that moment I had a chance, I had a choice to either like, okay, I'm either going to go and accept one of these other offers that I had at the time, or I'm going to take this and, and let it, like fuel me and and just get get challenged in a new way because when you're in high school football like there's challenges but like a lot of the times those guys are playing those d1 schools or the better kids on their teams the better kids in your area so i felt like being challenged that way helped me honestly take my game to another level so when i came back i was like it, it took probably like five routes and coach Meyer was like yo you're done like you got to offer that's awesome. so like that was not only was that like a challenge and it was disappointing at the time but it also like I had a decision to make as a young man. Like, I'm 17, 18 years old at the time. Like, am I going to quit and go take another offer, which I felt like I had other good offers, or was I going to take this challenge and come back better? And not only that, like I came back better, it blew him away and I got the offer. And it, it was kind of like, it honestly was like kind of like setting the foundation of what my career, what my character, what my legacy was going to be there. Yeah. The, nobody likes the side thumb. Yeah. Tell me one way no, or the no. other. Yeah. I don't want to be That's sitting in fact. somebody's office and they're like, yeah, you're, you're mid. Uh, you're, yeah. Yeah. Like Terry, right. Terry's low key mid. Yeah. yeah. Wait, did you catch the 200 <laughs> balls a day? Did you go and catch 200 yeah. balls a day? Uh, yeah, I did. So I had uh, my high school quarterback at the time. We would throw passes. My dad was throwing me passes. My mom was throwing me passes. My neighbor across the street was throwing me passes. Like I did dead ass like caught. 200 footballs That's every single awesome. day for two weeks. And I came back and he saw the significant improvement right there. And that's when it clicked for me. Cause I loved Ohio state it was close to home. The great um, tradition that's there, the chance to win national championships, that chance to go to the NFL, uh, all that was there for me, but like being challenged in that way, like I was like, shoot, if I can get better in two weeks, just doing that, what can I do over a four or five year span? And so that's kind of really what sold me at Ohio state and, you know, the rest was history after that. So what do you do now to keep your hands great? Because I think you've got some of the best hands in the game. That's, you know, when I you're so you catch that. everything. So, like, how, how do you work on that at this level? Is it still catching a yeah. lot of balls? Or do you, like, are you a, a, a manicure guy? Do you take care of your hands that way? <laughs> uh, I do take care of my hands. Uh, these are the money makers. But I think, for me, honestly, it's so ironic because when, something that I feel like a lot of people would have said was my ball skills was one of my weaknesses in college and coming into the league, I think it's become a strength in my game. Genuinely. I think it's become like something that I can rely on that I can put the time and work and the effort in. And it's something I can say, like, I'm, I've gotten truly better at this skill and for it to be as bad as it was and to see where it is now, like that's super dope. Cause I think it's a testament to the hard work you put in, but I think I don't take it for granted there. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still really highly focused on catching the ball when I'm in practice. Like, you shouldn't see practice. You may see me looking at the ball a little bit when I'm catching routes on there because I'm trying to train my eyes to catch the ball. So when the bullets are flying in the game, arms being grabbed on, everything, like, everything's not really perfect. You got to be able to focus on that football and bring it in. You really catch it with your eyes. So – um, I'll, you'll still see me like catching the jugs. I think when I catch the jugs, I think the jugs drill is a great drill, genuinely, just to catch, you know, catch and tuck the ball. But 
I think where things took a turn for me for the better with my ball skills was when I went to Ohio State and we started developing like jugs drills. So I would put like, you know, I don't know if you've seen the big the tackle dummy uh, mm-hmm. that the D linemen use. I would put that about 10 yards away of the jugs machine and I would knock it out with my hand. So the thing would tip over to the side and then the person would shoot the jugs ball, I'd catch it and I'd let the, the bag hit my hands. And so that was kind of just simulating just not the contested catch of the bag hitting your hands, but also like your obstructive vision. Sometimes you're not going to be able to see when the ball's thrown, but you got to be able to track it and bring it in. So um, I definitely still work on those things in practice. Like the attention to detail is really why I feel like becomes the habit because you're going to revert to your habits come the game. Like it's, it's hard to do something in the game that you've never practiced before. Yeah. yeah. I like that next level jugs drills. Yeah. You're taking it. That, yeah. It makes more sense to do that because yeah, I'm sure the jugs machine, it gives you good luck, especially if you know, you're just standing seven, eight yards away. It's a quick catch. You get the yeah. hand eye coordination, but also like having, having the tackling dummy involved, hitting your hands feels like yeah. that's, that's, it adds like a little more realism to the game. So that's, I feel like that's a Definitely. smart, th- smart thing to do. Yeah. Um, I, so I had one other, or I had two other Ohio state questions. One, we're, yeah. we're friends with Joe Burrow. We've had him on a couple of times. Great dude. <laughs> Great you dude. obviously, you know, he didn't play, you know, he, he transferred, but he was with you for a couple yeah. of years. Did you know, are you surprised at all about the Joe Burrow stories and like, this is the dude, like he's. Did he have that swagger even when he wasn't? Because that's the interesting yeah. part. He wasn't right. a starter. He wasn't Joe Burrow that we know now. Right. But it seems like he's always been the same guy. Joe's been the same dude since I met him back when he came to Ohio State in 2015. Like, me and Joe are still really cool to this day. And I think uh, we have a real genuine friendship because we both were guys at Ohio State were just guys. We were both trying to fight for our our respect on the team to have opportunity to play. And, you know, obviously he had his success somewhere else, but um, we all knew what was in Joe Burrow from the person that he was, the leader that he was and the player that he was. He just has that that it, that you can't coach when it comes to football in general, let alone at the quarterback position. He has that. And then some like he's winning all the sprints out there. Uh, we did like that same Valentine's Day workouts. He's like just going crazy in, in there. Like we've had some team meetings and he stepped up and said some things that were might be controversial to other people, but he was standing up for guys in our locker room. You know what I mean? So, like, he's he's that type of dude where you want to go to war with him any day, any week. Like, you want somebody, it's Joe Burrow. And then so it was so cool to see a guy like that to have his success um, in college and see what he's doing in the NFL. Like, he deserves it. And, uh, I've always been – uh, I guess you could say a Joe Burrow stay in account. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, I, mean, I just I just believe in that dude's ability so much more for the person right. than he is just a player. Like the person is the reason why you see the player. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it, it, it's great to hear that from you know someone who knew him and was with him before he became sure. the starting quarterback because it is Joe Burrow breaks that mold of. You know, analytics are, are so advanced now and everyone's mm-hmm. doing advanced number. It's like sometimes it's just easy enough to be like, he's that dude. Like he exactly. he is that guy and he has that right. he has it and people will mm-hmm. follow him. Not saying he doesn't have talent otherwise, but that right. that like moxie or whatever you want to call it, he's always yeah. had and that's why he's able to to be such a great leader in, you know, QB one. Definitely. I think just I think also what what keeps his hunger going is like he never feels like he has it. Like he has that that's that that appetite to continue to get better or things are not perfect. He's want to get the rep right. He wants to get um the guys feeling confident in what they're doing. So he puts a lot of time and work into his body, to lifting, to throwing, like everything that it needs to be done, like he's trying to do. And so um I think there's just a testament to who he is and like Obviously, he comes from a football family, and you know you could tell he was um, he was instilled with with great just foundational uh, characteristics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As far as uh, Commanders quarterbacks go, Taylor Heineke came mm-hmm. on the show a couple months ago, and I, I love Taylor. Taylor is like love him. I love watching him play. The play's never mm-hmm. over when Taylor's out there. He's going to try to make a play one way or another. And right. I, I've always noticed that when he gets out of the pocket, he'll do that thing where when he's really feeling himself, when he's like, okay, it's Taylor Heineke time, he'll mm-hmm. point downfield. And he'll like <laughs> – I think he thinks he's giving you an instruction on what to do, but I think it's just more uh-huh. for his own confidence to be like, all right, I'm calling my shot right now. And I always know yeah. that something either really awesome or really terrible is about to happen, but it's going to be fun. Uh-huh. He's going he's gonna to try to make a play when he does that. When he's pointing – yeah. Are you actually getting any instruction or are you just like, okay, I know Taylor's about to just chuck one up here. I better go get it. 
Uh, when you see him pouring, you 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 better start going that way because he's probably going to throw it. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like he just has that type of confidence in himself and his guys. Like that's one thing that's always stuck out about him. Like he's going to give you a chance. You know what I mean? And I think he's definitely uh, obviously wanted to continue to improve on himself and his decisions and things like that. Like he never wanted to put the team in a tough position, but he believes in him and he yeah. believes in his guys. And something about that, when you see that in a quarterback, like I'm telling you, it just galvanizes people. You know what I mean? So just the from day one, you know, meet him and uh, when we played Tampa a few years ago in the, in the playoffs, like he's he's just played with a, a incredible spirit that, is is you don't really find that in too many quarterbacks in the league at at all. Yeah, yeah. he loves diving for the pylon too. You better seal yeah. your your blocks around the edge when he's like <laughs> within fifteen yards because he's going to put that football all, right on the pylon. Yeah, right. yes, that's right. a fact. Um, so I I I'm also a Badger. Uh, and you broke my heart. I mean, Ohio State always beats Wisconsin, but I had one specific yeah. moment, 2017 Big Ten Championship game. We were there. Yeah. Um, I. I know when when Wisconsin takes a step up in class and has to play in Ohio mm-hmm. State, there's you know there's a little bit of a difference in athleticism on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had the 84 yard touchdown to start the game. We were yeah. like, I'm just so much faster than these dudes. Like it's not even fair because <laughs> that's how I felt yeah, watching. Yeah. I was like, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah. Like this is what I say about Ohio State. Like we definitely take pride in trying to have the best players um, and recruiting. Like that's one of the top things that. Coach Meyer and Coach Day always talk about just recruiting. You can't do anything about the players. But, like, we knew going into the Wisconsin games, like, especially playing at Camp Randall, they were going to be tough. They were going to be, like, you you better bring your toughness. Like, Coach Mick, the strength coach, was like, bring your toughness to that game. Because you never really know what could happen in those kind of games. I think that game fell into our favor where we got to play a style of ball that was in favor of us. Like, we got to really dictate the line of scrimmage. We got to get the ball on the edge to our playmakers. And we had confidence in that. We knew we had the advantage there. But um, if we didn't bring the toughness of our O-line and, and D-line, didn't set the tone up front with those guys that you guys got, like, we wouldn't have been able to possibly get those same plays off. And so um, I think we just came in that game with an attack mindset, especially, you know, we felt like, um, you know, we were fighting for our playoff lives at that time. Um, obviously, we, you know, what happened in 2017, but – um, that game was was super fun. As soon as I caught that ball, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I knew I was gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you were just faster than everyone on the field. That was a really nice yeah. way of saying yes, confirmed, faster than everyone on the field. How <laughs> fucked up was that <laughs> turf <laughs> thing, though? What were you guys saying on the sideline? Yeah. You remember that? No, when they had the, yeah. the turf doctor it took, out? It took forever. Yeah. yeah, when the dude came out with the bucket and the turf had came up. <laughs> yes. Like, with that, that threw everybody off because, like, when you're so locked in and that, I feel like that, that game was like we were just hot, you know. What I mean, everything was rolling for us, and stuff like that could kind of throw off your momentum a little bit. So uh, we were just trying to stay locked in on the sideline and make sure, like, it's, whenever this is happens, we got to keep our intensity up. Because, like I said, with Wisconsin teams, the games are never really over. Yeah, I, I that's I a nice like, way of saying you always win. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, I feel like in a moment like that, where the game's just being indefinitely delayed, that's got to take its toll on on Coach Meyer too. Like he's probably on the oh, sidelines yeah, yeah. doing the thing where he puts his hands on his knees. He's like yeah. hyperventilating, about to throw up because there's not a football happening. <laughs> yeah, the Maryland yeah. game. Remember the Maryland yeah. game? Were you worried about him? Uh, which Maryland game? Well, I I think that I think you were I there. Say 2018 or 2017. Uh, uh-huh. oh, yeah, when he yeah. started collapsing on the sideline because yeah. you guys were going to lose to Maryland. That he might have yeah. actually been. No, I know sick, what you're saying. I, I think it was more because of Maryland. Yeah, yeah, Maryland. <laughs> nah, like Coach Coach Meyer is a super intense coach. Like. Every play is like we win or lose on every play. Like that's how he treats it. That's kind of how you know we thought. Like e- any play can help win or lose you the game. You got to be locked in on your assignments. So I think everything you saw was like his genuine reaction of you know either frustration or he was excited for one of us making a play or he was you know just stressed out making sure everybody was you know doing their job from coaches and the players. Yeah. Um, just a little fun stat that you can maybe bring back to the locker room here. I, you probably don't mm-hmm. know this. It's something that we had to dig up uh, with the help of a friend at Stathole Sports. Um, Carson Wentz, your new quarterback. People forget, by the way, he got two MVP votes. He's a good player. Right. Um, in exactly 73-degree weather, Carson Wentz is the number one quarterback of all time in oh. yards per attempt. So you got to have something like you got to check your weather app on yeah. Sundays. Yeah. If it's seventy three yeah. degrees outside, 
start Terry McLaurin on your fantasy team, number one. Mm -hmm. And nah, just let him know. Like be like, hey, game. this is your zone, Carson. Go off. Yeah. We we love we love playing in comfortable weather. We'll play any weather, but like when you see it sunny, like any most receivers, I think for the most part, maybe check the weather because like you see a rainy game, it's like, all right, I gotta, you know, I gotta change the way I maybe catch the ball or things like that. When you see sunny, it's like, oh yeah, everything that we've been practicing all week is up. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's a chance we can run that because you know, when the weather's good, everything feels great, but like it just makes things sometimes a little harder when it's be rainy, but you still got to execute. What about snow? Because we always think that snow, snow helps offense, right? Because you yeah. you get to you know where you're going. The defender doesn't. Yeah. I've never played in a snow game in four years, wow. so I can't quite speak on that yet. I just maybe been a little drizzle in uh, uh, Green Bay. Green Bay, bro, <laughs> Lambeau is cold. Yeah. It is cold, cold. And uh, Buffalo too. They got that wind, but I haven't played in a snow game, so. Um, I, I can't quite speak. All right, you'll have to let us mm -hmm. know when you get in your first snow. No, game. That's kind of crazy to not it is. to you know from Indiana to play in the Big Ten like never yeah. snow game, huh? N never played in a snow game. My 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 freshman year at Ohio State, I was red, I was red shirted, and they played Minnesota in Minnesota in like two or two or three inches of snow during that whole game. And I remember sitting in my dorm, and I, I was red shirted, so you don't travel when you red shirt. I was like, man, those guys look cold while I'm sitting on the couch <laughs> just watching. <laughs> so I was like, that one, you know, yeah. you want to play, but I was like, that one, yeah, you stand on the sideline. That's even you're you're worse off than the dudes who are playing. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I have one last question for you. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw a couple of years ago. They, I think they ran through Aaron Rodgers' list of every receiver he's ever thrown a touchdown pass to. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. For you in the NFL, can you name every quarterback on the Redskins, Commanders, or football team that you've caught a pass from? Ooh. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to do my best here. Let me say Colt McCoy, mm -hmm. Case Keenum. Yep. Uh, um, Dwayne Haskins. Mm -hmm. uh, Carson Wentz. Does he count? Or yeah, 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 we'll count him. Yeah, we'll count him. All right, Carson Wentz. Uh, Logan Thomas against Dallas. And, yep. Um, let me think. Alex Smith. Yep. Uh, trying to think. Oh, Garrett Gilbert. Okay. Double Taylor G. Taylor Heineke. Yep. Yep. You, you're missing one. Ooh. You got the hard ones though. You got yeah. you got Logan Thomas. I didn't think that you'd get that one. Yeah. Garrett Gilbert. That was that was a weird uh -huh. game, huh? Yeah, that was crazy. He came in on Wednesday. Yeah, like, he came in on Wednesday. It was like he's the quarterback for this week, and we were like, "All right." What, what, <laughs> what know, happens? Like, like, how how do you develop rapport with a guy over twenty four hours? Man, like you you just hope that the preparation you put in during the week is going to work out. You know, what I mean, I think that's the cool thing about football. Like at this level, you 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 make it make sense. You know, what I mean, like because you know, like you can't come in an interview after this. Yeah, I only had you know. Only had two hours to, to practice with this dude. Yeah, people take that into consideration, but it's still a win loss mm -hmm. business. So um, you, you kind of got to go in with that mentality, and you just hope the quarterback is on that same page. And Garrett was great; like he was, he was talking through with me throughout that whole week, and um, you know we got to connect on the deep ball. So that was that was pretty cool. Got to add him to the list. Yeah. And, uh, there's, I forget, there's one more. Kyle Allen was the last one. Kyle, Kyle Allen. Allen. Yeah. Kyle Allen. Caught a touchdown yeah. from him. My guy. Yeah. I did against Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Kyle. Don't get mad if you if I didn't name it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, my last question is the rowback question. Use promo code TAKE. You get 20% off your first purchase. R-H-O-B-A-C-K dot com. Use code TAKE. 20% off your first purchase. Q-Zips, polos, hoodies. Uh, Terry, this has been a lot of fun. We appreciate it. You're a recurring guest now, so you have to come oh, on whenever whenever you, we ask. You have to come <laughs> on. You have to drop everything. But my last question was $71 million is very cool. Was it mm -hmm. kind of cooler, though, to be a 91 in Madden and a top 10 wide receiver? Because I'd imagine yeah. that's pretty fucking cool as well. Yeah. Like, honestly, I always took the approach, like, because my rookie year, you, you never knew what to expect. But now that I was in the top 10, like, I think that's pretty cool to to not have to create yourself in the game. And, like, <laughs> my own, my, I think that's dope. Like, I don't got to put all my accessories on there. I'm just there. And, um, you know, they may be pretty decent. So, uh, my, it's, it's cool to see like my homies, you know, we'll be playing and they'll use Washington against me and uh, they'll be, you know, using me as my player. But I, I always said also like 
this is this is this is my mentality. I'm like, well, even if Madden, you know, rated me bad, like you just got to make sure you're good in real life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. make sure no matter what, like just make sure everything's straight in real life because it's a video game. But like at the end of the day, I think any player, most players, could say, growing up, you played Madden or you wanted to be on Madden and you wanted, you know, to be good. So I think just to be ranked around some of the best receivers in the league is, is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I have one last, last, last thing before you go. Yeah, um, for sure. New receiver, Jahan Dotson on the team. Yeah. I, I love him. I think he's mm-hmm. he seems like an awesome, genuine dude. He carries yeah. the football around with him everywhere. Are you yeah. like, are you like, dude, you don't have to do that anymore. This isn't <laughs> high school football. You're, yeah. not, you're not being punished for fumbling. Does he actually really take it everywhere? Yeah. So when I first when I first met him out in California, uh, when we were uh, throwing with Carson right after I signed my contract, he had the football with him. So I was like, okay, that's true. But I didn't say nothing. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's you know, that's interesting. That's just his thing. Like I'm a big. If that's your ritual, if that's your routine, do your routine. Like, that's you. But I haven't seen it since then. Like oh. I haven't seen it in the building. I haven't seen it in camp and things like that. So I don't know if it's like. You know, he hasn't had any issues dropping the ball, so whatever he's doing is working. Does he have better hands than you? Seen it. If you were to say, like, who's who's got better hands? Uh, I think we have to see how he does in the game first. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I think just naturally catching the ball, he definitely just has a natural uh, ball skill ability. Like he makes some pretty easy catches um, that they look really easy and natural. He has a, like you could tell he has a good feel of playing the receiver position as a rookie and how to catch the ball, how to position himself to use late hands and some of the tactics that you don't really learn until you're a vet, you know what I mean? Or you had a great mentor. So uh, I'm interested to see what it's looking like when the games come through this year, because um, I've definitely noticed you can, you can be great in practice and you can come out and have a few drops in the game. So, um, but so far he's been great, man. I, I think it's going to be really cool to see how he can help us this year with his ability to be able to play the inside receiver, outside receiver. Um, uh, it's going to be fun for him. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Terry. We really appreciate your time. Best of luck this year. Congrats again on everything. And uh, we will, you'll be back on. So we're going to have to, we'll call on you when you have a big game. Yeah. Like yeah. when you guys make the Super Bowl this year, you have yeah. to come yes. on part of my take in for that person. Friday's episode. Yes. Yes. When yeah. When the Washington Commanders are playing the Super Bowl. We may have to, we had to do that show live if that happens. Done. Let's do it. Done. Okay. You drive <laughs> a hard yeah, bargain, Terry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. For sure. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate man. you guys, man. Yeah. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Future Super Bowl champion Terry McLaurin is brought to you by Barstool Bites and the Part of My Cheesesteak. The Part of My Cheesesteak is a delivery and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. I'm on my soup and salad except for the weekend's diet right now. So I made cheesesteak soup, which is like broccoli cheddar soup, except with steak in it. Delicious. They've got loaded fries as well. Part of my cheesesteak is now available in hundreds of select locations nationwide with new locations being added every single week. So what we have right now is not going to be the same as what it's going to be at the end of the year, at the end of the football season. We're getting more part of my cheesesteaks. I think I think we're eating part of my cheesesteak when we're watching football, right? Mm-hmm. That they seem to me like they go hand in hand. You'll see us eating it all the time. I love it. We actually ordered some today, right? Yes. Is that coming? You can go get them. Get them right now, Jake. They're right outside the door. Jake, did you order a part of my cheesesteak today? Be honest. I ordered one on Tuesday night. That's okay. honesty. Love it. Love yes. it, Jake. The fries. I love the fries. The fries very are crispy. great. Yeah, very crispy fries. They actually travel well for fries, which is a rarity in the delivery food industry. Get lunch, dinner, or late night delivery. They're open seven days a week. They even have these delicious dessert brownie bites, which are delicious. Go to partofmycheesesteak.com to learn more. Order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or on Grubhub. Okay, let's wrap up. We've got Fire Fest of the Week. Hank, start us off. I don't know where Billy went. Uh, so we kind of were talking about this earlier with one of your guys, Mount Rushmore Picks, but uh, I was on vacation last weekend. Uh, you guys, I came back on Monday. You guys know how it is after a long, hard-fought vacation. Uh, hard-fought, yeah. I was, I was worn out. A vacation My body was vacation. beat up. Yeah, so I came home from work in the late afternoon and fell asleep early, like probably around 9, 9 o'clock, super, super early. Uh, so I woke up, ended up waking up at like 5 o'clock in the morning, went to the bathroom, brought my phone, you know, do some reading. And I went on Twitter and was just, you know, I was half asleep, whatever. And I didn't, even, it was before Big Cat's coffee tweet, which is when I knew it was like, I'm, I'm up early. way too early yep. right now. Uh, and I clicked my mentions and I had like literally eight straight mentions from porn bots that were saying, you know, the various things porn bots say like, hey, do you want to hang out? Do you like my pics? Can we chat? Blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. 
So I thought it was funny. I just literally quote tweeted with like two word response. Be like, yes, sounds good. I do want to talk like you are pretty uh, as a joke playing into it, knowing that some people would think I was actually being horny and, and some people would understand the joke as as Twitter goes. But after I did it, I went back and I clicked the profiles of some of these tweets and it was the most aggressive porn I've I oh, think yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Like mm-hmm. it was it was quadruple airtight situations going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh so I was like kind of, I was like I don't want to I don't want to be slinging smut at six o'clock in the morning. Like everyone's gonna wake up and click these profiles and be like, what the fuck am I seeing? So I deleted it and then people on the internet think they caught me like being horny in that I did it mm. and and for some reason got caught doing something and deleted it. So for like the last two days I've had people sending me the screenshots being like Why'd you delete this? What's going on? What the fuck? You're like bonk, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just like people. They didn't catch you. They didn't. They did not catch you. You were doing it as a as a joke. As a joke. Uh, but people horny as a joke. People, yeah. People thought I was being horny for real, and then I got caught being horny, and I'm like trying to hide something. And now you're yeah. here, wow, story my life. to it. Yeah, to be like follow up. I was joking. I was yeah. I deleted it for the people. Right. You you had an ironic erection. Yes. No, it was like it was like that. That was it was like too much for an erection. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, yeah. Wait, there's you, a you were, there's a. You were so horny that you already came. Yeah. No, no it there's was just like what he's saying is right. There's a line that that's crossed with porn where you're like no. And when it's on Twitter, like you know, obviously when you're watching, there's a, there's a lead up, and you know you kind of got to get into it. This was like click the profile, and it was it was just seven 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 things going on yeah uh, so there were a bunch of horny narcs out there that sent me screenshots of hank's tweets and so i i looked up these profiles and i clicked on one i was like holy fuck it was extreme mm-hmm. even for the internet and they always Pre- have the Brad pin tweet say. yeah that's, that's yeah. just like right in your face yeah they, they, they let you know they so you know i, I thought out you know it was funny but i you know for the people i didn't want to have people wake up with that that imagery in their head all okay day. good, good thank you Hank. yeah pft your fire fest uh my fire fest also involves twitter so I um, I schedule tweets out. They come out every time we release a part of my take. It I comes like out 8 a.m. on the day that it comes out. And uh, apparently last week when we did the Nathaniel Hackett interview, I scheduled my tweet because the way that it automatically populates when you hit select date is a week from that day. Yeah. And so this morning, I guess Thursday morning, so yesterday morning, if you're listening to this podcast, um, I tweeted out the uh this is part of my take with nathaniel hackett head coach of the denver broncos and then everybody was like are you on drugs right now Mm -hmm. everyone and i was not on drugs the drugs had completely left my system from last night so uh, i was not high but um then i just started following up to that tweet and just like acting like the interview came out again today so i'm like you know what let's just get more downloads into it it. yeah i'm posting videos on it right now so uh but people thought that i was i was wasted that my brain was fried from mushrooms both not the case. It was a scheduled tweet snafu. I have about one of these per year. I think uh, the last one, I accidentally scheduled like 8 p.m. when it came out. And I was mm-hmm. like, good morning. Yeah. Here's a brand new part of my take. So, uh, yeah. Okay, that was a little time traveling. I'm sorry. It's the internet screwed me up. Not my own brain. Um, but whatever. It was a good interview. It happens it was a good to the best of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my fire fest is... Um, promo too hard. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. My uh, my son had an eye infection. I had to do eye drops for a three year old, and I I guess it's a reverse fire fest where I now think I can accomplish anything in the entire world because uh, for anyone out there who's had to do that, it is the hardest thing you've ever done in your entire life. Clockwork Orange status. It was yeah. There was a moment where I was like, this this seems cruel because I'm like peeling his eyes open. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's um. It was one of those parenting moments where it's like once you, I felt like KG, like impossible is nothing. Like I. I can do anything. anything. Is possible. And everything is possible. What is it? Anything is I think, possible. Anything I think is possible. the stories that he was trying to say impossible is nothing, but he he was just so caught up with it. He did anything. A- anything is possible. Yeah. Okay, so I'm impossible is nothing. A- impossible is c- truly nothing at this point in my life. So I feel good about it. All right, Billy. Just eyes in general are weird. Like even if it's my own eye. Yeah. I got a weird thing about like touching eyes, touching my eye, other people's eyes. That's uh, that's elite level parenting. It was funny though because he had he had like a little eye infection and I woke him up. I think it was like maybe Monday or Tuesday morning, and he was just like, "My eye is broken," and I was like, "That's not exactly what's going on." But yeah, you get the vibe. Was it like Bob Costas? <laughs> no, it lo- just, lo- it's just it's giving Bob Costas. He just had like the gunk, so no no pink eye. Uh, Billy Larry Seven is dead. We didn't even know him. Yeah, Billy, you killed him. No, killed a small. Sounds animal? like you killed him. No. I was moving his tank. Who was responsible was, for him? Well, uh, there was Mackenzie was taking care of him because uh, he was on her desk. And who then who she delegated moved that? 
Uh, me. Why'd you do that? Because I, I didn't have a desk at that time, so we couldn't put it on my desk. So then I was moving. How in. long have you had a desk at this office? Since eight. About a year? Uh-huh. Say about probably about a year. You killed our goldfish. Yep, it's dead. Okay. It's glowing in the dark. R.I.P. You dead bitch. R.I.P. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't grieve. I didn't know we had Larry Seven. I knew that we had him, but he, he was glowing in the dark. Honestly, he he didn't perform that well. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, maybe we'll get a new Larry for for football season. Perfect. Not Billy. Look after him. Well, I I will take care of him. The, the tanks on my desk. So R.I.P. Larry Eight as well. Yeah. How how many animals? <laughs> how many pets have you had that have died? Um, five. Ooh. That's a in the last that, year. That's a lot for how old you are. <laughs> yeah, but like some of them are short lived. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the frog you fucked to <laughs> death. <laughs> all right, Jake, finish us off. Wait, are we counting the chickens that all got killed by the hawk? <sighs> yeah, so th- it's more like what twelve now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> racking up numbers. All right, Jake, finish us off. I was riding my bike on the way to the office today, and a giant bee hit me in the face. A what? bee? Yeah, it didn't bite me, but it was. <laughs> bees, I could have definitely. <laughs> you, well, bees don't bite. Wow, could have been. Sting. Could, they sting. Yeah. yeah, I saw a bee once. Could have been me. Yep. That's crazy. It, it hit you. It was like the speed. Like I was going pretty fast. It was an e-bike, and the uh-huh. bee. You just, got in a car mm. crash, basically, <laughs> with a bee. You Jake got in a car crash with a bee. Wait, so you, on a bike, you killed the bee? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Did you check on it? Did you? Did no, you? I was moving too quick. Uh, <laughs> Make an audible noise. I was just like, "Whoa!" How did you? How do you know it was a bee? I could see the yellow and black. Uh, got it. Wow. Yeah. Great eyesight. Damn. That's pretty fucking sick. Yeah. So I'm okay. I'm here to tell the story. <laughs> Jake's, Jake's, Jake's glasses were just the windshield wipe. No, I mean that's. Uh, yeah, it may have saved my life. That's the most deadly encounter that you can have: a single hornet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. There we go. High speed crash. All right. Yep. Numbers. Six nine. Twenty seven. Hank, you still haven't gotten it. I have not. Fifty-two. By the way, I do have the most wins. Uh, Fifty-six. Fifty-six. I do have the most wins because I won on twenty-one once. You suspect. I remember I came back from Vegas. I said twenty-one and I won. I don't, but I'll believe you. So Billy is the champion right now. Forty-five. Billy's favorite number. Mm -hmm. How many times? Five. All right. See everyone on Monday. Love you guys. Tasmanian devils have four nipples, but they can have 30 children, but only four get to live, and it has to be the strongest. Buy R&R.com. Buy R&R.com. <laughs>